2022 began with breaking news less than a week after he was voted in. President-elect Donald Trump is starting to build his administration. Tonight, he posted on Truth Social announcing who will be in charge of our nation's borders over the next four years. That will go to Tom Holman, a career law enforcement officer. He served as the public face of the first Trump administration's efforts to step up immigration enforcement before he retired in 2018. He was also President-elect Trump said tonight, quote, I have known Tom for a long time and there is nobody better at policing and controlling our borders. Likewise, Tom Homan will be in charge of all deportation of illegal aliens back to their country of origin. And Not Homan. securing the border and closing the loopholes. Mr. Homan, Look, please respect the chair and the authority you know, of the chair. The time have, of the gentleman has expired. I've asked you gentleman politely to let me go beyond my, my time and you let other from, people go beyond their time, but not, not to Tom Homan. He don't get me go have, beyond his time. Mr. Homan, we have this, this approved is a, this is, this is a an circus. agreement this is a between the Republicans and the Democrats with the ranking member. We increased the time of one witness, uh, one uh, member of Congress who was interrupted by a protest. That is done with the approval of the ranking member. Please respect the chair's authority. The I respect woman, the chair's the authority, but the chair... Mr. The, Holman! The, the, you work for me. me. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a taxpayer. You work for me. The witness will suspend. Boy, oh boy. Y'all gonna enjoy this video. President Trump's borders are... Oh, man. This is it's like baking cookies. Baking pie. Now we're baking brownies. Oh, we got croissants too. Oh, <laughs> if those scones. Oh, and guess what? We got ice cream too. <laughs> you can't forget the ice cream. You can't forget the ice cream. Oh, give me a couple slices of that pie. Give me a couple slices of that pie. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Oh, brother Tom. President Trump's borders are. Let's jump in, baby. I got a message. As a guy who spent 34 years deporting illegal aliens, I got a message to the millions of illegal aliens that Joe Biden's released in our country in violation of federal law. You better start packing now. Oh, did we forget the muffins? Y'all got muffins too? We got muffins too, y'all. We got muffins too. All kinds of muffins. Ooh. Nice and buttery. Oh, nice and soft. Oh. You're damn right. Because you're going home. I got another message. Another message to the criminal cartels in Mexico. You smuggle enough fentanyl across this country to kill 148,000 young Americans. You have killed more Americans than every terrorist organization in the world combined. And that's when President Trump gets back in office. He's going to designate you a terrorist organization. And he's going to wipe you off the face of the earth. You're done. You're done. Mr. Holman, your name is on this. Is this correct? Yes, I signed that memo. So you are the author of the family separation policy? I am not the author of this memo. You're not the author, but you signed the memo? Yes, a, so, zero, a zero tolerance memo. So you provided the official recommendation to Secretary Nielsen on family, for the United States to pursue family separation? I gave Secretary Nielsen numerous recommendations on how to secure the border and save lives. But it says here that you, re you gave her numerous options, but the recommendation was option three, family but separation. What I'm saying, this is not the only paper where we've given the Secretary numerous options to secure the border and save lives. And so the recommendation of the many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommend a zero tolerance. Which includes family separation. The same as is whenever a U.S. citizen parent gets arrested when they're with a child. Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their If I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that Mr. father Holman, from his Mr. Holman, with all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. 
When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, go to the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to respond to what you've heard today? Yeah, I'd like to respond to Acting Chairman Jay Paul and your comment about the Trump administration moving money around for more detention beds. I'd like to remind you under the Obama administration, we did that most of the years he was president. We moved money around DHS, it's called reprogramming. We did that under the Obama administration. I, didn't, I don't remember any hearings on that. And also, I'd like to remind you that, that under the Obama administration, I mean, you're quick to point out that the cages were built under the Obama administration. I was there. Family detention, we had 100 family beds under the Obama administration. We built 3,000 more. So when there was a surge in FY14 and FY15 on the border, Congress was quick to give all the money we needed to build potential facilities, get transportation contracts. We reprogrammed money out of the majority of the years she was president. That was fine. Under Obama administration, FY12, we removed 409,000 people, half of what was removed last year. There was no hearings on that. So, I, I, you know, if this is about transparency. Let's be, let's be factual about it. The time of the gentleman has expired. Since you did address some comments at me, I'll just say that I didn't like it under the Obama administration either. In fact... Well, be honest with the American people. You, you can't point out faults in the Trump administration when it happened Mr. under the Obama Holman. administration. That's dishonesty. It's pathetic and it's sad. Mr. Holman, I control the time and I am the chairwoman of the committee. Thank you for respecting that. Um, I didn't like it under the Obama administration. And I'll remind you, Mr. Holman, that you also testified before Congress in support of the Obama's Priorities Enforcement Program before the Senate Judiciary Committee on May 19th, 2016, which had a very different approach. Well, can, that, I respond, can I respond that, to that? With that? Can I respond I re to that? No. Of course not. not. With I, mean, I want to give you some time, but I, I do want to ask one a circus, uh, a, a complete quick circus. question. And I want to make and one I quick statement. I, I find it very offensive that anybody would compare uh, any federal employee, frankly, to uh, someone who, uh, the Gestapo or uh, running Nazi concentration camps, that is very offensive. I have 15 seconds and I yield it to you. Thank you for saying that. I wish somebody in Democratic leadership would say that out loud. Look, you want to know why there's 50,000 people in detention? You want to know why we have a million, million, one million illegal entries in the United States? You want to know why we have these issues? Because you have failed to secure the border. You have failed to work with this president to close the three loopholes we've asked for two years to close. Time so if you want to know why this issue expired. exists, you need to look in the mirror. You, need, the you have failed expired. American people who are not Holman. securing the border and closing the loopholes. Mr. Holman, look, please you, respect the chair and the authority you know, of the chair. The time have, of the gentleman has expired. I've asked you gentleman politely to let me go beyond my, my time and you let other people go beyond their time, but not, not to Tom Holman. He don't get me go beyond have, his time. Mr. Holman, we have this, this approved is a, this is, this is an agreement this is between <laughs> the Republicans and the Democrats with the ranking member. We increased the time of one witness, uh, one uh, member of Congress who was interrupted by a protest. That is done with the approval of the ranking member. Please respect the chair's authority. The I respect the chair's the authority, but the chair... Mr. Holman! The, the, you work for me. me. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a taxpayer. You work for me. Woo! The hmm. witness will suspend. I like that fellow there. We have seen one estimate that says it would cost $88 billion to deport a million people a year. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Is that what American taxpayers should expect? What price do you put on national security? Is that worth it? Is there a way to carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. We have seen... I tell you, Mr. Mr. Holman, he ain't... He ain't... He, ain't, he not effing around. I told y'all this... this, this. The second term, they're not effing around. I keep trying to tell y'all, they're not effing around. Y'all about to welcome Mr. Tom, uh, your new borders are. I want to add one more thing. You talk about the, the, the child sex crimes. The, the, you know, under Kamala Harris, we have over half a million children have been smuggled into the United States, separated from their families, smuggled by criminal cartels and released in the United States. That's your fair as the borders are. And let me add this. They've released these people to so-called sponsors. They don't vet properly. Now they can't find 148,000 children or their sponsors. 
And I guarantee you, based on my three and a half decades of investigative experience, these children are in forced labor, or they're, they're, they're in forced sex trade, and, and they're living a life of hell. This administration, what they've done on the board is disgusting. Welcome back. President-elect Donald Trump has vowed to get right to work when he returns to the White House on January 20th. With the economy and immigration, his two top priorities. Trump is expected to issue executive orders to secure the border and tap into America's energy capacity to lower oil prices, spark economic growth, and rein in inflation that has seen the cost of basic essentials skyrocket under the Biden-Harris administration. While enacting mass deportation to remove the millions of people illegally living in America, Joining me now are former acting ICE director Tom Homan and Key Square Capital Management CEO and founder Scott Besant. Gentlemen, great to have you both with us. We so appreciate the both of you. We are expecting you both to have a role in the upcoming Trump administration next year. So, Tom Homan, let me kick it off with you. What are the plans for deportation? You heard what President told me. Uh, President Trump told me in that interview a couple of months ago. He says it's got to be done. How do you round up 10 million people and deport them? Well, look, I agree with the president's uh, plan on this, and, and the same plan he had during his first administration. You concentrate on the public safety threats and the national security threats first, because they're the worst to the worst. So it's going to be the worst first. That's how it has to be done. And we know a record number of people on the terrorist watch list have crossed this border. We know a record number of terrorists have been released in this country. We've already arrested some planning uh, attacks. So look, it, 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 the president is dead on when he says criminal threats, national security threats are going to be prioritized. And that's the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Scott Besant, uh, the Wall Street Journal this morning is writing about the cost of this deportation. And um, it's going to be hefty. So you've got the cost of rounding up people who may have committed crimes uh, for deportation at a time that President Trump wants to have no tax on tips, no tax on overtime, no tax on Social Security. How will we afford all of this? Well, Maria, first of all, let's talk about the human cost. We have 100,000 fentanyl deaths a year because of the porous border. We have the in increased crime. We have the underlying fear that the American people have. You can't put a price on that. But you know, I'll, I'll tell you, too, that what we are going to do here, uh, you know, Donald Trump is the um, has staged the biggest political comeback in history. And I think that we are on the verge of a golden age in the economy for the next four years where we can have a growth agenda, where we deregulate, get energy prices down, and get interest rates down. And that will drive growth like we have not seen for years. And you know the, the cost of this deportation will be a rounding error. But I keep going back to the human cost, and you can't put a price on that. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that he has said he wants to do is uh, re-implement his remain in Mexico policy, Tom. Tell me about that. <laughs> uh, that requires asylum seekers to stay in Mexico uh, while their cases are processed. Uh, your, your thoughts on how important that will be? And again, same question for you, the cost of deportation. Well, first of all, cost of deportation, this President Trump's plan is going to be a cost savings to the American people because this administration is, is paying for free airline uh, airline tickets all over the country, free hotel rooms at 500 bucks a night, uh, a free education, free medical care, and that's in perpetuity. What President Trump's plan is going to do is over time is going to save the taxpayers money and put an end to this foolishness. They're paying 500 bucks a night for hotel room in, in, in New York City. Meanwhile, there's empty ice beds at $127 a night. So President Trump's plan is going to save the taxpayers money over time. And as far as the Remain in Mexico program, look, I worked for six presidents, not with Ronald Reagan. Every president I worked for took steps to try to secure the border. No one did more than President Trump. Okay? He, he, his success was unprecedented. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he came up with the Remain in Mexico program, it, that was an outstanding idea because that stopped people from coming. People are still claim asylum, but they're going to wait in Mexico. But once yeah. the word got out that they weren't going to be released, they stop coming. When they stop coming, women aren't being raped by the cartels. Children aren't drowning in the river. The cartels aren't making money. So President Trump's policy to remain in Mexico, not only a game changer, moved it to an historic law on illegal immigration, it saved thousands of lives. Well, I mean, look, practically speaking, who's going to do it? Are you envisioning military troops throughout no. the country no, me... rounding people up? Tell me how it's going to be done in a practical sense. 
First of all, I want to make one thing clear. I read a media a piece this morning, uh, I think Daily Call or somebody said, Tom Holman says the military is going to go out round, rounding up and arresting illegal aliens. Never said that. Never said that in my entire life or in my career. So that was mm. a ridiculous uh, thing I just read in the paper okay. this morning. It's going to be a well-targeted planned operation conducted, leading by the men of ICE. The men and women of ICE do this daily. They're good at it. They're all okay. got Fourth Amendment training. They know they can and cannot do legally. And, and, and it's a well-targeted. We, when we go out there, we're going to know who we're looking for. We most likely know where they're going to be. And this will be done in a humane manner. I, I keep reading these stories about you know concentration camps. ICE has yeah. the highest detention standards in the industry. And, and, and so these people will be well taken care of. It will be a humane okay. operation, but it's a necessary mass deportation operation. Scott Besant, are tariffs going to pay for this partly? How worried are you about this uproar over strategic tariffs is how President Trump has stated it? Well, Maria, first of all, to go back to Tom's point, I think in a Trump 2.0, you are going to see an all of government coordination mm -hmm. like you have never seen before. Everyone in the administration is going to be aligned, just as you saw with Senator Rick Scott. So, you know, I think that there will be a lot of voluntary deportations. I've been working on a plan for financial deportation that you know, could restrict the flow of funds in terms of remittances. Um, and so I think this is going to be an all government effort. Um, okay. In terms yep. of the tariffs, I, th I think the tariffs have been mischaracterized. They're, they're a one-time price increase, and you know, nobody knows how to use these tariffs like President Trump, both for revenue and negotiating. Okay. Gentlemen, great conversation. We so appreciate your time, and we look forward to many Ooh. more discussions with you both. Oh, Tom Holman and Scott Besson. Oh, Thank you. I'm going to Brian Kelly.